I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmar Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. Our work can be seen on film, Broadway, and at Renaissance festivals around the country. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. There at the last, they looked upon death and defeat, and all of their valor was in vain, for Sauron was too strong. With the final Hobbit movie coming out, we decided we wanted to build an iconic weapon from Lord of the Rings, so we have made Sauron's mace. We're using inch and a half 12L14 hex material for the handle. We started out cutting the mace handle on the lathe, but four feet of unsupported material leaves a lot of chatter from the cut. We're gonna use the 1970s Sejo mill to recut that hex to a smaller size so that we can make it match the design. We continue to rotate the steel on the forge to get an even heat. I pull out the handle and upset it, driving it directly down using its own mass to thicken the point. Each time Kerry strikes it, he rotates it about a sixth of the way, just to keep it even. When striking on something like this, it's more important that your strike is true rather than so much hard. You'll see as I put a couple down, I start getting a little harder, but I'm counting my blows, one, two, three, four, five, six, before I change how I swing. Uh, it's nice to do these things by hand, but it's also nice to have the proper tools. So we've got our, our point pretty much drawn out. We've got our upset where we're nice and fat. We're very close to our final surface that we want to have on the piece. After forging the tip of the mace handle, now it's time to go to the sanders and clean up the lines. And since Sauron is much bigger than a normal human, we're gonna make it really big. Being that this is going to be four feet from here to here, these flanges are going to be well over a foot. Sauron's mace is a six flange mace, so we'll be cutting out six of these, and they're going to cause a lot of damage. John Plasma cuts the large flanges from three-eighths plate. John uses the Bader sanders to deburr and smooth the surfaces on these flanges. I'm going to use the two inch wheel to come up to these lines to leave that real standing ridge that's really necessary for the look of these flanges. Most people who know me know that I don't like to draw at all when I grind, I just freehand it. On this particular piece, it's really important to leave as much metal on our standing ridges as possible, so that's why I drew those lines in. But now that we got those grind in, I'm going to go ahead and go to the big wheel and do our bevels. John puts a final finish and defines the lines on the mace flanges before they're welded on. Using the sander, I grind an eight-sided faceted conical pommel for the end of our mace handle. Just finished TIG welding the uh, mace flanges on, ready for blending and cleanup. What we've done is we've taken a standard contact wheel, it's already a narrow one, but we've actually ground a peak on it to make it even more narrow to get in these tight spaces. Biggest problem with using this teeny tiny narrow wheel is being able to keep the belt on and stable. So you gotta turn it on slightly. Ah, see? Here's our weld before the blend, there's the weld after. So we've got the first five of the spikes welded on. I'm gonna TIG weld on the final one. I'll have to uh, tack it on each side to make sure it doesn't move and then I'll come back and lay the weld in. So these spikes could add additional hand protection if a sword were to strike this mace and was sliding down towards your hand, it would be deflected away from the handle. To fit the rings for the handle, I force them up the shaft and weld them in place. 
I chisel the rings on the handle, a technique called roping. So if you see me, I'll be rocking the chisel back and forth, not just making a straight down cut. When you rock the chisel, it gives it a rounded appearance in the bottom of the cut, which is more like what a rope would do. I use a small threaded center section just to keep the pommel in place while I weld it solid. I use a large propane burner to heat the mace and burn off the oil to give us the surface we're looking for. Then we'll apply some WD-40 oil, kind of captures the heat, captures the color, seals it all in, and then we'll go back with a hand scotch bright and highlight the whole piece. Certainly don't have a kiln big enough to stick something like this in, and even if we did, it'd be pretty dangerous sticking something so heavy, so this is a great way to do it. And it also gives it to look like it's been forged in the fires of Mordor. Pretty excited to be doing a build for the Lord of the Rings. Sauron's mace by far shows a couple clips in the movie where he just wipes out a whole line of men with one swing. So we're doing it big and bad, and I can't wait to get it done. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next. Special thanks to our friends at Zombie Go Boom.